I hope as all of you go back to your companies today, if your C-level people aren't at your table today, that you will proudly take your award back and to Mo's point say, where the hell were you? <laughs> you can quote me if you have to. You may not feel comfortable doing that yourselves. Um, but it's very important. You're absolutely right, Mo. It starts at the top and goes from there. And speaking of starting at the top, I have the pleasure of introducing Lisa Hughes. Now, I'm, this is all personal. I'm going off script here. But I love Lisa Hughes for multiple reasons. But I love her as a woman who watches the news every night. And to me, Lisa is the woman who's a serious news person. She, I watch her, I think, oh my god, she's so different, and she's so articulate, and she's so passionate about what she's doing, and to me, she is the serious news person. And so, Lisa, know that when I watch the news at night, I love you for that. You're terrific. So, Lisa and I have, have um, both served on the board of the Big Sisters. I have just recently stepped down from the Big Sisters, but we had the pleasure of serving together on that. So when Lisa is not keeping these crazy hours with Mark Lund at um, CBS, WBZ, she is serving the community like nobody else. So I, I've never met a woman with more energy and more passion, and you're an incredible mother and a, and a community person, so we're thrilled to have you here. I'm, I could read this and tell you all the Emmy Awards she's won. It would go in one ear and out the other. But know that she is an Emmy Award winning pro like no other woman in news. So, Lisa, please come up and be our MC. <laughs> I love you, Kathy. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have to say, one of the reasons I love serving on Big Sisters, and I was unaware that your term on the board was over, so I'm very sad about that, was that everything Kathy touches has this great energy, and tonight is a perfect example. And Senator Cowan, may I just say, I have to speak after you. You're so fantastic. Um, I, it's an honor to share the stage with you and a table and a love of the Jackson Five. So the night is off to a great start. Um, I'm honored to be here for the 18th Annual Rosoff Awards, and let's get this started, because I know the awardees and the honorees are, are ready to hear their names called. The Rosoff Awards recognize leading businesses and executive leaders who tirelessly promote diversity. And we all enjoy the benefits in a community that is more inclusive and more dynamic, and yes, more prosperous as a result. This year, the Ad Club received so many incredible submissions that reflect the initiatives here in Greater Boston that it made for a serious challenge for the judges, as you can imagine. The submissions get better every year. There are more terrific initiatives from which to choose. And so before we begin the actual awards, I do want to acknowledge the members of the committee for their judging efforts. Thank you for all the time you put into this. We know it wasn't easy. And to all of the fantastic applicants for your hard work and your passion on this very important issue. And now for the honorees. Tonight we recognize three exceptional corporate leaders, one outstanding nonprofit organization, and one outstanding individual. They all exemplify the spirit of the Rosoff Awards by recognizing and promoting the importance of diversity. And they have all made huge contributions in Greater Boston. And tonight we honor them for their guiding principles. Our first award tonight is the Internal Diversity and Inclusion Initiative category. This award honors companies with initiatives or programs designed to increase diversity internally in the workplace. Companies that create an environment that is welcoming and supportive to every professional. The finalists for this year's award were Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Ernst & Young, and Interpublic Group. Now this was a tough category this year because each one of these companies has dedicated several outstanding initiatives to promoting inclusion within the companies. 
And it is my pleasure tonight to announce that the winner is Ernst & Young. Please welcome George Nebel, managing partner at Ernst & Young, to the stage to accept the Internal Diversity Award. And as he comes up, I want to tell you a little bit about Ernst & Young and something that I did not realize. 171,000 employees around the world in 150 different countries. The international team helps build trust and confidence in capital markets and economies all over the world. The main objective of Ernst & Young's diversity initiative is, in a word, inclusion, in all its processes and in all parts of the organization. Ernst & Young is now at a point where minority partners and staff represent about 32% of their total employee populations in the US and Canada, which is more than double the representation from a decade ago. And the representation of minorities at the partner or principal rank has nearly tripled since 2000. Please help me in congratulating Ernst & Young. If I get to say a word, a word or two. First of all, Lisa, thank you so much. I'm, I can't say how proud I am on behalf of our whole organization, both here in New England, but also around the world. Uh, having started off in this profession 35 plus years ago when it was 95% white guys, and watching the migration, as Lisa alluded to, the percentages, more importantly, my partner Pam Kelleher up here, who leads all of our people, community, and other activities. Uh, Diversity and inclusiveness, I think it was said best by the senator and the mayor, it's a foundation of who we are. It's how we see ourselves as being successful and our famous byline up there, building a better working world, it's truly uh, our differentiation. So with that, thank you so much. Pam and I have got to carry this thing around. Anyone wants to share it with us, more than welcome. But thank you. Congratulations. Our next award is External Diversity and Inclusion. This award recognizes companies that have made community outreach and inclusion an integral part of the business plan. These companies and institutions are giving of their time, their resources, and talent to promote and embrace the diversity within the community. The finalists for this year's external award are Care.com, The Massachusetts Convention Center Authority and Suffolk Construction. All three of these finalists are making outstanding contributions to the Boston community and they all deserve recognition. With that, this year's external diversity and inclusion winner is the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority. And please welcome Colleen Richards-Powell, Chief External Relations and Communications Officer for the MCCA. A little bit about MCCA. The commitment to diversity truly starts at the top. When we talk about the board, the board is diverse. Its members support and encourage diversity within the contracts, namely a robust supplier diversity program, seeks out vendors and contractors. The MCCA also supports diverse organizations working to bring change to Boston. Since 2007, the MCCA has awarded nearly $650,000 in community partnership grants to diverse organizations, including Ballet Rocks, Sisters at Work, and Build. Major diversity events are now choosing to come to Boston because of the tireless welcoming and marketing efforts of the MCCA. There is growing diversity within the organization and a quarter of the MCCA employees and a third of the recent hires represent diversity. We tonight applaud the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority and congratulations, Colleen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I get to use my speech. <laughs> Um, I want to thank all the other honorees who were, it was just wonderful, wonderful company to be in with Care.com and with Suffolk Construction, both organizations that we admire tremendously. I want to thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Don, and to the Rosoff Award Committee, and I'd also like to thank the Rosoff family. It really is an honor to be here with you tonight. My name is Colleen Richards-Powell, and I'm the Chief External Relations and Communications Officer of the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority. 
I am happy to receive our second Rose Off Award on behalf of Jim Rooney, who gives his regrets that he's not able to be here tonight. The MCCA is committed to creating the best facilities for people to gather together from across the country and around the world to share ideas. By bringing conferences and events to Boston from all over the world, we have a unique opportunity to connect our city with industries across all sectors, including medical, technology, education, healthcare, financial, life sciences, and others. We bring them to Boston to experience our city's excellence, its cultural offerings, and the amazing brain trust of talent that Boston has to offer. We're equally, com equally committed to sharing our growing success with all the communities in Boston that make it possible for this city to be le a leading convention destination. We are particularly proud of our work with Senator Linda Dorsina Forey in the creation of legislation to expand the Boston Convention Center and that is becoming a model for ensuring diversity and inclusion, inclusion in the projects that are making Boston better every day. This year, we look forward to welcoming the National Association of Black Journalists and in 2016, the National Society of Black Engineers. By bringing diverse events to our city, we expose people to our innovative global city with an emerging leadership that is transforming its landscape. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Colleen. Could there be three more photogenic women right there? It's beautiful. We now move to our next award, which is marketing to a diverse audience. The award recognizes brands and their marketing partners that are creating campaigns that demonstrate a unique understanding of a diverse audience or community. This year's finalists are Arnold Worldwide with the Centers for Disease Control. <laughs> Global View Communications with Eastern Bank. and Mullen with Mass Mutual. Now I think you'll all agree, all of our finalists play a critical role in marketing to diverse audiences, and this year's winner is Arnold Worldwide with the CDC. Please welcome to the stage Paul Nelson, Managing Director, Bill Gerard, Creative Director, and Lauren Hyatt, Marketing Producer of Arnold Worldwide. Come on up. No one will forget these spots. The tobacco industry, we all know, has long targeted specific groups with their marketing. So to make a real change in the nation's smoking rates, the CDC's tips from former smokers campaign needed to target these diverse groups as well. Knowing this, the CDC has featured African American, Native American, Native Alaskan, Latino, Caucasian, and gay and lesbian men and women in their ads. But the campaign's appeal to diversity went beyond race or color, religion, geography, or sexual orientation. Arnold also targeted people with specific diseases and the associated handicaps and challenges resulting from those diseases. The campaign featured people with tracheotomy holes in their throats, wheelchair-bound stroke victims, and people who had lost limbs, eyesight, teeth, jaws, or lungs. This is amazing. During the first three months of this campaign, nearly 80% of smokers in the United States reported seeing at least one of these ads. A later study published in The Lancet, one of the world's leading medical journals, proved that the increase in quitline and website activity resulted in 1.6 million people attempting to quit smoking. An additional 220,000 people quit immediately and more than 100,000 people quit permanently because of this campaign. It saved lives. Congratulations to Arnold Worldwide. Thank you, Lisa. My name is Paul Nelson. I'm managing director at Arnold. Um, we are, are very proud to represent Arnold tonight, um, especially in front of the Rosaf family, from which um, the namesake comes from. Thank you to the Ad Club. Thank you to the Rosaf committee. We'd like to congratulate all the finalists tonight, all the award winners, um, Mayor Walsh, Senator Cowan. Wow, you and what you do, quite an inspiration. Tobacco-related disease continues to be the number one preventable disease in the United States, but yet we have a tobacco industry that spends $23 million a day 
marketing their harmful products, specifically targeting racial and minority communities, women, and youth. I'd like to congratulate our client, the Center for Disease Control's Office of Smoking and Health, this team here and the team there from Arnold, for developing the TIPS campaign that is inspiring smokers in these communities to attempt to quit smoking and eventually save lives. We've made a lot, a lot of progress in just three short years that we've been running this campaign, but as it is in any classic David and Goliath battle, we have a lot of work to do. And we at Arnold Worldwide, along with our clients and our partners, are determined to fight this battle more than ever before. So thank you very much. A Stanley Cup reference could bode well for tomorrow night. <laughs> And as the sister of a former smoker, I say thank you for scaring the hell out of my brother who has now quit, so thank you. <laughs> Our next award tonight is for the Nonprofit Diversity and Inclusion Initiative. This award recognizes nonprofit organizations for which the primary business focus is on initiatives specifically intended for diverse populations and communities. These initiatives aim to educate and create opportunities and open doors for diverse populations. This year's finalists in the Nonprofit Diversity and Inclusion category are the City Performing Arts Center, <laughs> Junior Achievement of Northern New England, and Year Up, Inc. All of our outstanding nominees are working tirelessly to benefit populations in our community and to promote inclusion. This year's nonprofit diversity and inclusion winner is the City Performing Arts Center. And please welcome Josiah Spaulding, President and CEO of City Performing Arts Center, to accept the award. Now you'll remember this. Back in 2005, City Center began shifting its programming from one heavily focused on ballet and Broadway to a deliberately more diverse and culturally relevant mix. It redefined City Center's role and its commitment to a community-focused performing arts center and an open access introduction for people of all ages and backgrounds and interests to experience arts and culture, expanding audience growth, and certainly expanding diversity. The City Center offers free arts education programming that's accessible to youth and families of all socioeconomic backgrounds. And one particularly influential program is the City Spotlight Summer Leadership Program. It's an innovative summer jobs program for at-risk Boston teens. It's approaching its fourth year now, and the City Spotlight's leadership program uniquely empowers young people in Boston to become leaders at home, at school, and within their community. Last summer's program reached 16,490 audience members through 111 street performances, 773 young people participating in youth-led workshops in 22 neighborhoods throughout our city, making our city richer, and more beautiful. Please join me in congratulating City Performing Arts Center and Joe Spaulding. Uh, well, in the words of Mo, inclusion. I want you to know that we had no idea that, that we thought we would win this tonight. And, and, and Sue said to me as we were, my chief of staff who's helped create all the things that we do, said, well, so do you have a, a speech? I said, no, I don't. I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> and yet the, what I was thinking about was how incredible the not-for-profit industry is in inclusion in this city. And to be uh, in the company of year up and junior achievement is just plain remarkable. And if you think of all the not-for-profits in this city who are banding together to provide that inclusive feel for what this city is all about, we are very honored to be a part of that. And so on behalf of the City Performing Arts Center, my entire staff and Sue Sullivan, my chief of staff, we say thank you very much.
Congratulations, Joe and Sue, and thank you for everything you do at the City Center. So our last award tonight is the Mentor Award. It's an award that recognizes an individual who goes above and beyond his or her professional requirements to provide meaningful mentorship, guidance, and support to a diverse community or candidate. This year's finalists include John Sims from Bentley University. Mary Grimes Finley from Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. And Sylvia Farrell Jones from the YWCA Boston. <laughs> While each of these finalists have given outstanding amounts of time acting as mentors, this year's Mentor Award goes to Mary Grimes Finley. <laughs> And it gives me pleasure to sing her praises right now. <laughs> Mary Grimes Finley is as committed to mentoring diverse candidates externally as she is internally at Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. And here's one example. She meets a young woman while she's volunteering at Haley House. And she offers to update her resume, think about how to dress for work, prepare for the interviews, and oh, we'll go over those interview questions as I take you out to lunch. Mary also has a track record of volunteering for community programs that are particularly devoted to the development and mentoring of young people, in particular, the YMCA Achievers Program, Young Achievers Program. That's where she delivers the annual orientation to the program, and she provides support through workshops like interview skills. She has a continuing relationship with the Partnership, which is an organization committed to the development of professionals with color. Mary is a tireless volunteer mentor advising to make the people to make the most of their opportunities and recognizing those opportunities when they present themselves. She is committed to giving back to the community, willing to do whatever. She brings the same enthusiasm whether she is greeting people or holding a microphone as you are about to find out. Let's congratulate Mary Grimes. I am humbled and I am honored, and I hope I don't start to cry. <laughs> when Kathy left a message for me on my voicemail, I thought it was a prank. <laughs> so what is this? What is she talking about? This can't be true. And I, I played the message back, listened again, and I said, let me call her. She left a number. I called and went right to voicemail. I said, I knew it. It's a prank. <laughs> and her voicemail was full. So that said, yeah, this is it. A little bit later on, though, I got a message from a mentor and friend that said, congratulations, and I knew this was real, and I really started to cry. I do what I do because it's within me. I love people, and I made a commitment a long time ago as a young girl that I would always be a role model and a mentor for people, that I, when I, I'd always wanted to give back. I wish my mom was alive to see this. She'd be so proud. Thank you. Congratulations, Mary, and thank you.